Air France KLM has had a difficult few years. These results seem to suggest that it's turned a corner. Is it sustainable? Yeah, first I think it is good news. You have seen the result of the second quarter, free cash flow positive, reduction of the debt, unit costs are down, and a slight improvement of the uh, EBITDA compared to last year. So I think that all in all it is a solid quarter. It is improving compared to last year, but you remember that last year we had a strike in Air France, so we have to take the improvement a bit more carefully. On top of that, two news important today, a fleet renewal program for the medium haul fleet and also a positive vote of the pilots concerning the possible expansion of the Transavia fleet, which is also, I think, a good news for the group. So yes, in, in fact, we are a bit far from the difficult years we had in 2018. Yeah, just to point out to everybody, Transavia is, is your low-cost carrier, and you've been struggling to get pilots to, to make that migration, that journey to Transavia. You talk about the fleet renewal, and you're buying basically not an aircraft like the one we're showing on the screen in front of you, which is the A380. You're buying at the opposite end of the Airbus fleet, which is the, um, the 220, the old C-series from Bombardier. Why is now the right time to be buying large numbers of those aircraft, given that companies Companies like Ryanair are pointing to real difficulty in, in the, in the short-haul market. Uh, first, because we have to renew the uh, Airbus 320 fleet of Air France. In KLM, which is the uh, other component of the group, uh, there has been a lot of renewal of the medium haul fleet in the last years. And in Air France, we had indicated some years ago that it was time to think about the renewal of this medium haul fleet. And uh, the time is coming for a decision, and it is what we have done with Ben in the last months, working on this project and taking finally, yesterday, at the board of FN Scalem, uh, the decision to order 60 uh, Airbus 220, which is exactly, as you said, uh, the former uh, Bombardier program, now acquired by, uh, by Airbus. And we speak of uh, the Airbus 220, which is in fact an older program developed by, uh, by Bombardier, but which is now commercialized and built with the support of Airbus in, in Montreal. So I think it is a, a very important step. Second, do not compare these aircraft to the 380, of course. The second one is for the, the long haul, and, and the first one is for the medium haul, mainly the domestic market in France and the European market medium haul. We operate uh, from Charles de Gaulle to all destinations into Europe. Well, Mr. Gaget, speaking of those A380s, you have 10, five are leased, and those leases expire this year. The other five you own. Will you be renewing those leases? Will you be upgrading the five that you own? No, clearly. The decision yesterday, also taken by the board, is to take the decision to stop the operation of the 380 by 2022. There is many reasons behind that. We have today a fleet of uh, 10 aircraft. There is three which will be given back to the resource quite soon. And we have yesterday uh, decided that the other seven will be progressively phased out between now and 2022. So it's clearly the end of the story for Air France, KLM and the 380. We have still to operate for the next three years, but after 2022, there will be no more 380 uh, flying uh, in, uh, in Air France. So it is uh, an important decision, uh, meaning that we are more focused on long haul aircraft of the middle size, like for example the 350 of Airbus, also the 787 of, of Boeing. But clearly, it is the end of this uh, a bit old generation aircraft which is uh, Airbus 380.